Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. This is a channel where I talk all things early retirement, really based on my journey. But it's never my expectation that you retire at 51. It's my expectation that you live your best life. And so what I do is share my story in hopes of inspiring and helping you understand that what maybe at some point in my life might have seemed impossible for me became possible. I hope it could do the same for you. And so uh, on that note, let's go ahead and get started. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been getting a, a lot of comments. And I, again, I'm always humbled for the comments. I think it's great when people leave comments, whether they're positive comments or not so positive comments, because it's all about taking this information that we're discussing here, thinking about it, processing it, coming up with questions and either agreeing or disagreeing with it. Because as long as we're critically thinking about it, it's all good in my neighborhood. So, uh, But I do want to share with you a comment and then try to answer a question that I got uh, in a recent um, episode that I think is a question that a lot of people ask themselves. And it, it's something that goes a lot with, with without saying and so or without being talked about. So I have a subscriber. His name is Julio Blanco 302. And I'll read the entire comment. I have my notes here. So again, I apologize in advance for looking down, but I just want to make sure I get it right. So he says, fascinating stuff, Sabado. The beautiful thing is without tests, there's no testimony. So uh, clearly those tests played a part uh, in shaping you as a person and your willingness to share that journey. Uh, your wife sounds like a great motivator. And I think you mentioned she's retired as well. So I wondered how you guys were able to find common ground and agreement on retirement might be a cool video topic. And so, number one, I do want to say thank you to uh, Julio for the comment, um, because I do think that in order for people to understand my from my experience, you really just have to share your experience, and you have to overshare your experience, and you have to be, you have to keep it real. And for those of you that have been rocking with me for a while, you know that I keep it real. And I, I try not to hold back. I mean, I don't go too deep because... I'm 51 years old, and that's a lot of days to go into, but I do try to give you some of those key things that, that help me in a, in a way that's raw and uncut. Um, you know, again, my, my goal is never to try to become the mega channel. My goal is to try to make sure that I put out into the world information that helped me, so in my, that's my way of trying to pay it forward. And so, But I will tell you that my wife is an incredible motivator. Um, I tend to believe that people are motivated internally. You know, it's the academic answer. People are motivated internally and they're satisfied and dissatisfied by uh, external uh, factors. But she is. She's been my cheerleader for, and, and, and I hate to use that because I know there's uh, there's like a, a gender assignment that goes on there. But she's been my cheerleader from day one. She's a great motivator. And, you know, I don't know that she's a motivator as much as she is just a great partner because when I look at the world, I have the ability to look at the world with four eyes as opposed to two, so you just see more, and we have the ability to, to talk about it. But, you know, as we started looking at getting into retirement, there was a key question that you asked that I think is really important is how did we get on the same page? And so I have some, I'll try to give you the story because I think it's hard to understand uh, what those were without understanding the context. And I think context is the spice of life and the key to understanding. So I'm going to give you a little bit of context. So um, about uh, what year are we in now? So about seven, about eight or about eight years ago, eight, nine years ago, uh, my wife and I had been talking about, you know, wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to retire? And so we looked at our total situation and it was interesting because the way we got to that conversation was when we looked at a trust attorney. One of the things that Susie Orman talks about in her book is having an irrevoc or having a revocable trust so that way your assets can be managed through the trust in case something happens to you and it also has your will, your advanced care directives and all these types of uh, financial uh, affairs that you will need to be taken care of when you when your time comes. So we went and we, we had a trust attorney. We went and talked to the trust attorney and we got it through the, um, there's a, there's a legal plan at work. And so I think most of you, if you work for a large organization, if you go, there's like a prepaid legal type of plan or some type of plan that helps you get discount legal advice. So we use that. We went and talked to a trust attorney and the trust attorney, uh, mentioned, you know, you might want to speak to somebody about, you know, your finances and, and where you are. And we had talked a little bit about retirement, 
but we didn't go into any detail. And so I asked him for a referral. He gave me a referral. Then we met, went and met with somebody with, uh, with Edward Jones. And I know different people have differing opinions about fee-based advisors and all of these different arrangements. But I, I'm just going to say that it's worked for us because, again, I'm here. I'm happy and I have peace of mind. But we went and talked to him. And he laid out for us our budget. He asked us about our goals. We talked about all of our goals. Uh, we talked about all the money that we were saving. We talked about what we would need to save and our, our retirements, our pensions, all of those different components of our retirement. So we just talked about all those, put those uh, into uh, a bucket. And then over time, our financial advisor changed. We stayed with Edward Jones, but we got another lady uh, named Judy. And so Judy talked to us and really put our budget into clear focus and said, look, here's what you're going to need on a monthly basis based on your expenses. And we started to look at um, how do you protect uh, income down the road? So when you get older, how do you get to, uh, how do you protect it? So in case, let's say somebody has to go into a nursing home or something like that. So we went into looking at long-term care and things like that. And folks, any of these things that I'm talking about, if you want more detail, you'd like a um, uh, an episode on it, let me know in the comments and I'll work on putting together an episode because each of these, even though I'm going through them incredibly fast, are incredibly rich and deep in terms of the um, the content behind them. So anyhow, anywho, uh, so we started putting together long-term care and we had a, we, we got long-term care insurance that we pay for over time and, um, and then we started to think about, then my father around that time, in that round period of time, maybe a little before, maybe a little after, my father passed away. And so then we, my wife and I just started to think about how much time do we actually have in this world? Because my father was in his 70s and he hadn't retired before he had his first stroke. And so we realized that time is really short and it really got us to ask him the question, of what about us? What's What kind of life do we want to lead? And do we want to go into work every day and be working class stiffs and not have any life after and say that our main contribution to ourselves was our work or do we want to do something else? Um, and so what Judy helped us with is really crystallizing a budget. We put together a plan. We looked at when we were ineligible for different types of withdrawals and so on from retirement funds and pensions and, and all of that. And put a date behind it. And our original date was, I think, somewhere in our 60s. And part of the plan was we were we had a we had a nice home. We wanted to sell our home into something that was going to be a little bit more sustainable because our home that we lived in was a three story place. And anybody that has uh, stairs, particularly as you advance in age, it just becomes more difficult. And so we wanted to get a, a one story place. Wanted to be close enough to family to where I could be there for family, but not close enough so that way everybody's up in the mix. And, and those of you that have family that's close know you don't want everybody all up in the Kool-Aid all the time. But we want to be close enough to get there and to provide support. And particularly because my mom lived a little bit further away. And we wanted to make sure that we got a place that we would be comfortable with long term. And so, uh, so we sold our house, bought a house uh, in the town that we live in now. And that was the first piece of it. Now, the next piece was, is at some point over time, uh, my wife was going to start working from home. And the idea was if we set it up right, we could set it up so she could start working remote and we could start the wind down. And now during this time, I was working in the old town that we lived in. So I had an apartment there and I'd come home on the weekends and or we would work up there and then come home on the weekends, which was fine because, again, this is all part of the wind down. Then the big C hit, and everybody knows what the big C is, COVID. And so what COVID did is COVID accelerated the process of working remote. For those of you that follow my channel know that I'm in healthcare administration. I was the chief human resources officer. So for me, I had to be in, but my wife she was able to work remote. So it created a, a strange scenario where she was working remote, but I still had to go about 70 miles away to the apartment and work during the week during COVID. And so we had to set up a bunch of different protocols and, and just different things in the hospital. So to provide for the safety of our doctors, nurses, and the patients that we had the privilege to serve. Um, so, it, but for her, the first step had already started. 
So we got to, we got down that path. We for a couple of years, the next goal was I want to get a job that's closer to home because I like my wife. My wife likes me. We enjoy spending time together and being away in an apartment, you know, three or four days a week. It just wasn't working. I, I used to do that when I was traveling and I, I stopped that because I like being home and I didn't want to start doing that now. And so then I took a job that was local. And that's the job that I told you was it was toxic and it created a bunch of issues for me and all of that. But when I look back, I realized that that job had uh, was a means to an end and it really helped me get to where we needed to go. We were doing good work. It met my personal mission. Uh, but there were other options that were out there to see. Anyway, I had to go too far down that path. So then I started working here. And at that point, and we started to really take a look at what the options are. Here's our budget. Here's what we're spending. Here's what our expenses are. Here's what we've cut. And we went through a process of starting in our 60s, I think at 59 and a half, 60, 61, something like that, and working our way back and asking our financial advisor every meeting, and this is through a course of six or seven meetings, I had asked the question, um, what if we moved it back here? What if we moved it back here? What if we moved it back here? And we got to the point where my wife was six months out, a year out, and I was maybe two or three years out. And so I think I've mentioned before that my original plan was to retire in 2026. Didn't happen because I was able to retire sooner. But the question started to become, what happens if we go sooner? We took a look at um, those scenarios. We ran the Monte Carlo scenarios. Next thing you know, the idea was, he said to me, he says, if you retire now, there's a 90, there's an 85 percent chance that you're gonna meet your financial goals. Which my financial goals are being able to have resources until I reach 100 years old. And he said, if you don't meet those, you would run out of money. Based on the models, you'd run out of money at the age of 95. And I just thought to myself, I don't know how many black dudes are living until 95 years old, still worried about how much money they're making. So I said, you know, let's just do it. And so then she did it first. We tried it out uh, for about, I don't know, about a year. And then I talked to my financial advisor because things were just becoming untenable at work. So then I pulled back and said, what happens if I do it in six months? And so it turned out about nine months after my wife retired, then I retired and then we went. And so that's that's really the story of how we we got there. But there were some key places where we had to really get on the same page. And there were some key conversations that we had. And I think the first thing that we had to do is make sure that, you know, we were, our, our dialogue around retirement was open. A lot of times one person has one idea, the other person has the other idea. And instead of having a conversation that devolves into a debate because one person saying they want to do one thing, another person says they want to do something else. And then you even start talking about what you do when you're in retirement. And so one of the things my wife and I align on uh, very clearly is that we like each other and we're very simple people. And so we don't need a lot because if we needed a lot in order for us to be together, then it wouldn't be about us being together. It'd be about all of these other things. And I think from a values perspective, we look at it that way and we say, look, we like each other. We enjoy each other. If we could spend time in a box and it's just the two of us, then we spend time in that box. And so we didn't allow ourselves to get down into too much debate around the details and we just talked freely. Do you want to, you know, we talked about some of the challenges that come up, some of the challenges with having a sense of purpose, not being busy. Are you going to be bored? What are some of the interests that you have? So on and so forth. Um, I have, I always had, I think many of you mentioned, or I've mentioned to many of you in the past that I've always had a, a concern about running out of money. I didn't have a bunch of money growing up and I'm always afraid of being broke. And so, and, and I don't know if you folks know this, but the two biggest fears that I've ever had in life, and I still, these are the only two fears that I ever have, is um, one of them is being homeless and the other one is having colon cancer. And so I know that I don't have colon cancer, and so I just have to work on the not being homeless piece. But so it was working around that and saying, look, here's what my real concern is around retiring early. Here are what my financial concerns are. And so once we kind of, we, we, we did that. Then the other thing we did is we tried to understand that, you know, our concerns is just because we have concerns, it doesn't even necessarily mean that we're in disagreement. We just may have a different set of concerns. 
So she might have had a concern that I was going to be bored or she might have had a concern that she wasn't going to feel like she was able to do certain things. And I had a concern that, you know, am I going to run out of money? Are we going to be homeless? Are we not going to be able to sustain the lifestyle and so on? And so we started to focus on not me worrying about running out of money, but me worrying about what her concerns were. And then she focused on understanding my concerns, because I think one of the things that I've, I've heard uh, as, as I made my way through life is see, I think it's one of Stephen Covey's first, ha- Stephen Covey's first seven habits of highly effective people but seek first to understand, then to be understood. And so I really spent a lot of time trying to understand uh, what her perspective was. Was she concerned about financial security? Was she concerned about a sense of purpose? What were her concerns? Because as long as I knew her concerns, I can address those because I trust she's going to look out for mine. And so each of our conversations with our financial advisor were um, addressed the concerns that we had collectively. And it's like any negotiation. No negotiation starts with you have a big separation and then all of a sudden you're right in the middle, you just you you piece apart each of the each of the uh, the the concerns and you say this is the concern you have how do you address it? You're concerned about running out of money. Well, here's how we could here's what the scenarios say. You want to know what happens if there's a downturn. Well, here's what your levers are, so on and so forth. Which leads me to the next the next thing that we did is as opposed to focusing purely on the emotional pieces, we looked at the numbers because there's the, the numbers don't lie. You've got, when you're looking at retirement, you have historical numbers relative to how the markets, um, how the markets performed over time. You have historical numbers around inflation, although we were in unprecedented inflation. You have numbers and, and information about the investments that you're in and the history of the, uh, of the investments. And sometimes there's people and, and there's a lot of folks out there that say, well, what if everything goes to hell in a handbasket? Well, the reality is, is that if everything goes into hell in a handbasket, you're probably going to be out of work anyway. So you're going to be in the exact same situation. But the reality is, is most companies are, you're not going to run into an environment where all companies close at the same time. You're not going to run into an environment where every stock goes all the way down to zero because Companies still have to run. Companies still have products. The value might go down for a period of time. But again, when you go back to the concerns, I do have that. I did have that concern. And so you put together your emergency fund. So when times are down, then you have something to help you keep going through that period of time. Um, And then uh, the other thing we talked about, and we spent a lot of time, each of these, we spent an incredible amount of time, is what kind of lifestyle do we want to live? Because some people... They want to they want to have an active lifestyle. They want to go live in Europe for a year. They want to go RVing for months at a time or they want to go and become a professional pianist or violinist or some people want to go start YouTube channels. <laughs> but, you know, you it's it's we talked about and again, we talked over what do we want our retirement to be? Now, the beauty of it is, is our life was always the same. We're very simple people. People know people that know us know there's not usually a lot going on in terms of our lives because we find things that we want to do and that we enjoy to do and we just do those things. But everything doesn't have to be planned out and there's not a specific need to have control over every future activity. It's just understanding here's some of the things I might want to do. So when I said I think I might want to substitute teach, fine, I support it with substitute teaching. She wanted to go and work at the city hall and do a marriages for people, be a a officiant. And so she went and she did some stuff like that. And instead of saying, well, why would you do that? We say, that's great because the fact that you want to do it doesn't mean that I have to want to do it, but you, you could go ahead and do it. And so we, 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 as, as much as we're alike, we allow each other to express ourselves as individuals. And so there's a lot of people in relationships that think, you know, you're bringing two people together to make one. But what I believe is if you bring two people together, then you're making a third body on the outside of that. And so you bring what you bring to the table, your significant other, your spouse brings what they bring to the table. And then all of a sudden you have this third thing. That's the combination of the two. That's even better than the two as an individual. And so because we are aligned that way in terms of our values, it made it easy for us because we didn't have to want to do the same thing. Now, are there things that we want to do? 100%. percent 
We have a bucket list of vacations that we want to go on. We have ideas of where and when we want to do certain things. Um, but we don't have to be doing the same thing all the time every day. And so it's, it's, it's beautiful because we, we, we were able to come to accordance on that. But these are things that if I didn't have, if I wanted to travel and she wanted to stay at home, then that would be a problem. And so you have to get on the same page with what kind of lifestyle is it that you want to lead in retirement? What is it that you, that you want to do? Um, and then you just, you just take the small steps. You don't, especially when I, when I think about um, my financial woes, because that was a major one. And, and folks, I make it sound easy here because I'm here and it's it, the path. You never really appreciate the path because when you get to the destination, everything seems easy. But I had a lot of, I was thinking about what happens to the estate if something happens to one of us. When do we take Social Security? What happens if there's an economic downturn? Um, what happens if companies go bad? What happens if uh, one of us ends up in a, in, a, in a home because we can't care for ourselves? And so it's not, again, it's, it's never starting with this and then just getting to here, but it's taking all those small incremental pieces. And I think I've mentioned in other videos that there were a lot of conversations with the financial advisor before we got to the point where she and I were both comfortable with our retirement. And then once we got there, we were good to go. Because one thing about me is once I make a decision or once a decision's made, even if I'm not getting everything that I want all the time, or even if she's not getting everything she wants all the time, I make a decision and I move forward because we've litigated all those pieces uh, going back. But it, understand the small steps, the adjustments, even just insofar as the time, and getting comfortable with the time because ideally we want to retire at the same time, but there was a little apprehension because you just don't know how it's going to go. Then we say, you know, this is pretty easy. Now, the fact that you're retired makes it harder for me to go to work. And so we were able to pull my date up a little bit uh, further. And then the last thing that we did, and I, I think that helps us pull all of this together, is we knew that it was too big of an apple for us to take the bite out of alone. So we Talk to a financial advisor. We talked to a professional. I think I mentioned a trust attorney, so we talked to the trust attorney. Um, we talked to a financial advisor. Um, we went out and we got long-term care insurance because we wanted to make sure that we were insured in the event that something happens and one of us needed long-term care. But we sought out professional help, so we didn't feel as though we had to cover it all by ourselves. Now, there's some of you out there that'll say, well, I don't want to pay for somebody to do this and do that and do this. Well, two things. Number one, you get what you pay for. But number two, you pay for it so you don't have to do it. And I don't want to spend my time managing my portfolio. I want to pay somebody else to do that. Just like I, you know, I don't mind spending time uh, working in my garden because I like doing that. But in terms of detail in my car, I'm going to pay somebody else to do that. Why? Because I don't want to spend the time because time is my most valuable resource. And I want to be very, very intentional about the way that I, the way that I spend my time. My time spends, I spend my time doing the things that I want to do. And that's the same thing that we did here. And so once we got that professional in, the professional knows that they, they have all the information. They're the professional. They know, they know the stuff that we think we know, and they know when to push back. We were meeting with our financial person uh, just the other day, and one of the things he said, he says, you know, Sabado, I, I'd said something about something. We we're talking about bonds. We we're talking about CDs or something. And he says, you know, I've, I've got to push back on you because of this. And he explained something. I said, you know what? This is a path that I think we can go down. So, again, it's because that person knows what it is that they're doing. So, you know, so I know this is a lot, but it, it really took a lot for my wife and I to get on the same page. Not because we were in a big disagreement, but just because we both had to make sure that we were comfortable. Both of us pay a lot of attention to the details. Both of us understand how important uh, this decision was the impact today and the impact down the road. And we understood that we really needed to put the rigor behind it. So that way we were good. And so once we did it, we never looked back. And so if I were to, if I were to take what I just said and break it down into a few different places, I would break it down this way. I would say one, you have to have open dialogue. Even if you're disagreeing, even if somebody's going to get angry, like I always say, and I, I say it kind of in jest, but I mean it, is that if you ever ask, ask me a question, if I care about you enough to answer your question, it's always going to be the truth, which, by the way, you're all my friends and I will answer questions for you. But you got to have the honest answers because if one person is dancing around what they want and not saying it and speaking it clearly because they think the other person can get upset, well, 
they may end up getting down the path and then resenting the other person because the other person didn't take into account what they wanted. So you just have to have that open dialogue and really talk about what it is that you want, what you see your retirement, how does it look, and so on. And and the, the next thing I would say is try to understand the other, your partner, or your significant other's concerns. Everybody has concerns when you're making a change this big. If you don't have concerns about it, that means you're not thinking about it. And if you're not thinking about it, then you probably shouldn't even do it in the first place. But everybody's going to have concerns. And it's easy for us to get caught into looking at our own concerns and trying to figure out what the issue is for, for us. But the key is, is understand the other person's concerns because sometimes, like in my case, I may have thought out the concerns that my wife has, but if I don't have that concern, I don't mention that to her, then she's not going to know and she's going to be frustrated because she doesn't think I'm thinking about her. So I just say try to understand not just your own concerns, but the concerns of the other person. And the, the next one I say, look at the numbers. You know, I, I think it was there's a movie called White Man Can't Jump with Woody Harrelson and uh, Wesley Snipes. And he says, money talks, BS runs a marathon. And so, you know, look at the money, look at the money, look at the facts, look at the figures, look at the data and don't, you know, a lot of people go on and, and a lot of YouTube people go on these YouTube channels and they say, well, you know, this person on YouTube said this and for everything that one person says, somebody else is going to say, but there's historical information. There's information that sits out there that will tell you specifically, and it may not all be what you want because a lot of what we do when we go and research, particularly on YouTube is we look for confirmation bias. But what we want to do is, what I'm suggesting you do is find, go to the financial folks and get the financial information because the numbers will tell you what the performance was over time and it'll give you the, the probability of specific things happening in the future. So that way you're making your decision based on good information. You know, most of the stuff we deal with, we can argue with, we can have different perspectives about, but if you're anything like me, I got to get my money right. And so it's got to be right. It's got to be based on uh, facts. It's got to be based on the figures. And I'd rather have the numbers tell me that I don't like something than me finding somebody that tells me that I do like it and then down the road find myself in a bad situation. So look at the numbers. The The other thing I would mention is, you know, discuss, you know, the kind of life you want to lead in retirement. Not everybody wants to lead the same type of life. There's a guy that uh, in my neighborhood, when I walk around the lake, every day he's out reading a book. You know, I, I think reading a book is great. I wouldn't want to do that in my retirement. I'd rather do other things. That's why I play the piano. That's why I'm doing the Master Gardener program. That's why I go on walks. That's why I work out. That's why I go on guys trips. That's why I go on RV trips with my wife. That's why I do all these things that I do because I'm not just sitting in the back reading. But if I just want to sit in the back in my backyard and read a book and my wife wanted to do all those things, then it created conflict. So you got to have those conversations up front. Set the boundaries up front. You know, as, as I like to say, set your price and live your life. But, you know, be clear and be honest about what it is that you want, what kind of lifestyle you want to lead. If you want to lead an active lifestyle where you're doing a bunch of stuff, then have that conversation because the reality is, is you could probably find some type of compromise when you, when you get into that. Uh, the, other, the other thing that I think is critical is that as you have all of these discussions, don't try to, don't try to do it all at once. Take small steps. Have small conversations about small pieces of it because I'll tell you that a lot of this stuff gets overwhelming. Um, again, I'll, I'll tell you, I was talking to my financial person yesterday and we were talking about uh, bonds and we were talking about how we can save on fees for these different bonds and all these things. It got to a point where it was overwhelming. So I had to just say, look, this is overwhelming. So everybody backed up and it's frustrating sometimes when you tell people that something they're talking about is overwhelming because that means they got to slow down, but they slow down. And they went through, the, and I say they, it's my wife and my financial advisor, and they laid out specifically what those pieces were that I was misunderstanding. And as soon as they did, I was back on track and we were cooking with gas. So again, I think that that's the same way with retirement. A lot of times when you and your significant other are looking at disagreements or, or differing opinions or different viewpoints on retirement, it comes down to the details and a misunderstanding of the details. So make sure that everybody just, doesn't just understand the what, understands the why. You know, they say they tr you, you judge others by what they do and yourself by your intentions. Well, you may have an intention of doing X, Y, and Z for X, Y, and Z reason, but if the person just knows the what, then they may get frustrated for that. So, um, and then the last one, and I, I try to say this in every video because I'm not a financial advisor. I never played one on TV, never even played one on YouTube. Um, but is to seek out a professional. Have a conversation with a, a financial advisor, even if it's a consultation. 
Um, and there's also softwares out there. I don't use any of those softwares because I had a financial advisor. But there's a bunch of software. But find some place outside of yourself to, um, to, to check and double check the information so that way you don't find yourself in a bad spot. Because, you know, what we have a tendency to do as people is that, you know, we draw a conclusion at some point in some interaction with a thing or a person. We draw a conclusion as to whether we like or don't like or a positive or negative conclusion about that individual or thing, person, place, or thing. I'll just say that noun. So we, we, find, we, we draw a conclusion about that noun, and then things tend to bias on a positive or negative, uh, kind of like the halo, reverse halo effect about that noun. And so when you talk to a professional, a professional is going to tell you what it is. They're not always going to tell you what you like. But they're going to tell you the truth. And so and they carry some of that burden if it screws up down the road, if they gave you bad information. So uh, speak to a professional. So I know there was a lot here. It's a uh, I, and I, I hope it was not for you a word salad, but it was it was a very, very rich topic. Again, I want to um, I, I do want to take a moment to thank. And again, I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, Julio Blanco 302 for asking the question. Number one, thank you for the comment. Number two, thank you for the question. I wanted to make sure I gave a thorough answer to the question because I think it's a good one because it's easy for us individually to think about retirement, but the world doesn't revolve around us. It's, there's other people that are involved. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of considerations. So I, I, I think this is a good set of, of ways to get on the same page with your spouse. Um, and you know, if there are other ways that you could think of or other things you think of, let me know, because again, I take those and I put those directly into the comments and you know, those comments, or I'm sorry, you put those directly in the comments and those comments go out, go across to the, as they call it, the WWW, the World Wide web. And people see that. Um, so, you know, let me know, let me know if there's other things you can think of. Also something kind of fun. Let me know what you think of the beard. I had a beard when I started the channel, then I, I got, I, I cut the beard off. And then I'm letting it grow back. Let me know what you think of the beard because I'm I'm thinking about going back. Uh, Fear of the beard, you know, we're getting towards a, what do they call it? No no shave Movember. So I'm thinking about it, but but let me know. But um, anyway, if you if you like the video, uh, if you found it helpful in any any way, you know, feel free to subscribe. I I put out content a couple of times a week. Uh, I've been it's I've been really inspired with uh, the responses that I've gotten from you about the content. Um, you know, my goal is to put together content that works uh, for you and it's not about me, it's about you and, and really helping people get to the point where, you know, you're inspired to, to maybe look at retiring a little bit earlier, getting yourself to the life that you want to live. Because remember, it's not about, not, it's not my expectation that everybody's going to retire early. It's my expectation that uh, you're going to live your best life. So on that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.